Let's say you're in the market for a fast 3D printer, but you also need that printer to have a huge build volume, and it needs to be enclosed to be able to print ABS or ASA. What do you buy? Well, there's not very many options on the market as of right now. However, this, the QDX Max 3, does seem to foot the bill, and I've spent the past two weeks with it printing and testing items that I sell every day to my customers on my Etsy store. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my honest thoughts and opinions on this printer after two weeks. Let's get started. What's good everybody, Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo, and I promise next week we are back to drone videos. We have a lot of great content coming up, so be sure you hit that subscribe button if you already haven't. But for now, let's talk about the QD X Max 3. I think I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, they went ahead and sent this out to me to take a look at. I was a little bit unsure of this printer because when you talk about 330 by 330, in your mind, you have an idea of how big something could be, but then it shows up and you try to pick it up and you're like, holy cow, it's a lot bigger than I initially thought. So this machine is not something you're going to want to move around very often. It is a big machine, but it's built very well. It feels much more industrial than I think a lot of people give it credit for. So let's go over the specs on this machine. So we have a Cortex A53 processor on board, capacitive touchscreen, we have auto bed leveling, it runs Clipper, it has a heated enclosure bed chamber so the chamber can actually heat up. I'm not even talking about the build plate, I'm talking about the actual chamber itself can maintain hotter temperatures, which could be good for certain types of filament. It has a PEI textured build plate. It has two power supplies on this beast. It's crazy. It has a bunch of fans. It has a fan on the extruder, has an auxiliary fan built onto the side to cool filaments such as TPU down. It also has a built-in charcoal filter as well. So if you want to filter out some of those BOCs from let's say ABS or even ASA, has a fan built in to actually siphon air through that charcoal filter, trying to purify some of those smells. There's no carbon fiber rails in here, but this machine can reach speeds of 600 millimeters per second during printing, and it has travel speeds of over 20,000 millimeters per second as well. It is also a direct drive extruder. It also comes with two different hot ends. This is the stainless steel, hardened stainless steel hot end, and it also has the brass hot end as well. So you have two different types of hot ends depending on what type of filaments you are going to run. It's obviously, thanks in part, this hardened stainless steel nozzle, you can print hardened materials such as carbon PETG and carbon PLA if you choose. But if you don't want to print that, you don't have to. I haven't had any problems printing PETG um, or even some minor ASA within this printer here. For the most part, I have tested out uh, the tough PLAs and TPUs because that's predominantly what we print and sell on the store. So that's what I've been printing. Matter of fact, this mic that I'm using here was printed on this machine. I did do a color swap because the slicer that this uses is Prusa based. So it's very, very familiar to me. So if you're somebody who's used Prusa slicer before, you'll be happy to know that the QDX Max 3 proprietary slicer is based on Prusa. It's very easy to navigate with some minor tweaks that make it a little bit more um, tuned for the QD ecosystem. So those are the specs. Like I said, fully enclosed, aluminum housing. There's really not much plastic on here. Um, let's talk about the internal inside of the chamber itself. So the inside of the chamber has a light, also has a clear dome top, which I think is fantastic. So you can pull this top off if you wanted to. There's also a door that closes. The door is a tempered uh, plastic. Close the door. It's a see-through door, see-through top. It gets a lot of light, a lot of visibility. Because it's a Core XY printer, the bed never actually moves forwards and backwards, so it starts up a little higher than I would initially want it to. So when you're starting to do a print, it is a little bit harder to see. So if you want to run time lapses or something like that, it does make it a little bit more difficult to do so. There's also no camera inside of here to be able to monitor any of your prints, even though that this machine can connect to your Wi-Fi or you can run an Ethernet cord on the backside. That's something I would love for them to uh, add eventually is a webcam so I could monitor the print or do time lapses. Maybe that's an option in the future, but there's not one inside of there. Most of the time when I have been printing on this machine, I have left the door open 
because when you are printing PLA or even TPU, you want to get the maximum amount of cooling that you can on these types of materials. And thus far, it's been pretty fantastic. I haven't had too many issues with printing PLA or TPU. I feel like I'm able to achieve similar quality and similar speeds to that of my Bamboo X1, P1S, or even my P1P. So I did a couple of benchies here, and I just want to talk about these benchies because the benchie can complete in 16 minutes, which is much faster than my Bamboo X1. It is at the same speed of the Creality K1 that's boasting a 600 millimeter speed. But however, the quality I think of the Benchy from the QD X Max 3, depending on what filament you use, is definitely much better. So here's a Benchy that I've done between uh, the Creality and the QD X Max 3. So this was done with a white Duramic uh, PLA Plus, and this was done with the gray Duramic PLA Plus. Very similar PLAs, obviously different colors. And I can tell you straight out of the gate, 16 minutes from the Creality K1 and the Benchy is pretty rough. But same Benchy, 16 minutes on the QDX Max 3 and it came out really flawless. I mean, there's very little for me to gripe about. There's some minor imperfections on the backside here, but it is super, super minimal. And it actually probably just looks more like a seam more than anything as to where there's definitely some layer adhesion issues happening on the Creality K1 that the QD X Max 3 doesn't have. So as far as benchies go with the PLA Plus material, I didn't have any problem whatsoever. I then went ahead and printed this flexible dragon, again, out of the Duramic PLA Plus white, and it printed just under three, minute, three hours and 30 minutes. I think it was like three hours, 25 minutes to print this and it looks really flawless. We got a little bit of stringing, like those little whisper flakes up at the top, but I mean, this thing was absolutely cooking. The last time I printed this same model, I printed this on the Anchor Make M5, and it took just a little bit over five hours and 15 minutes for it to print. So the QDX Max 3 shaved off just about two hours in the print time, and I think the quality looks just as good, if not better. So after printing a bunch of PLA, I switched over to my ducks. These are my ribbed rider ducks for the DJI Avada. While this is not something you can download and benchmark yourself, these ducks, when we first started printing these, we had to print them on the artillery machines and they would take about six hours to print a set of four ducks. Six hours for four ducks, it would take two hours for one singular duck to print because we had to go super slow. This duck printed in one hour and 15 minutes on the QDX Max 3. And the quality is, I mean, I have zero complaints. I think it looks amazing. The only thing I need to do to make it even better is to make it to where the supports can release off of the little clips that we designed a little bit easier, but that's just some minor tweaking within the slicer to get those support spacers in there a little bit more. But ultimately, I mean, this came out absolutely perfect. It feels good, infills perfect at 20%. I mean, there's really little to no imperfections on these docks. They printed absolutely flawlessly. And actually these printed faster than what I'm getting on my bamboo. And I can print six of these, which is three sets, where right now I can only print four. I can print three sets. So that's a total of six docks on this. And I could probably fit a little bit more if I'm really pushing it but they printed absolutely perfect. And again, I couldn't believe how fast I was able to do it. I was really impressed with that. All right, let's talk about these. These are our road mics that we've been printing. Now these are printed out of PLA. I print these with the door open. I was able to do three of these in three hours and 15 minutes. Now for context, this print is not a very complicated print. However, it's a very tall print and we try to do it to where the seam is always on the backside and we wanna do it at a layer height of point. 15. I want to try to have the layers almost minimalized so when somebody's holding it and using it, it looks like it's a solid piece. So this took, for three of these, it took three hours and 15 minutes for these to print. For contacts to do these same mics on my bamboo machine, it takes me just about six hours for them to complete. And oh, by the way, there are times where my bamboo machine, because the vibrations are so great, will knock these over, even though I'm printing them just like this. 
One of the nice things about the QDX Max 3 is the vibrations are very well isolated. Because this machine is so big, it's not shaking and rocking and rolling all over the place, and it's not toppling these prints over, which is, is something that's really big. Because there's been several mornings where I've came back in here, and I've just got a spaghetti mess from my X1 or my P1P because it knocked these over about halfway up and it just never completed the print. So that's something to be said is the vibrations are I think at an all time minimum when it comes to the QDX Max 3. Now the filament goes through the backside of the printer and there is even a filament holder for this that you can install, they do give you. You can go ahead and put um, some of that uh, decontestin in there to go ahead and take up some of the moisture. I opted not to use their filament spool holder because it's on the back side of this printer. And depending on where you put this printer, it may be a pain in the neck to reach around the back side and actually change out those filaments. So where I have this is on the end of an, a table in my print studio, and I'm actually using a King Rune filament spool holder that sits on the side of the printer. It just makes swapping print uh, printer spools a lot faster than using their proprietary spool holder. This is just something you may want to consider. Now the printer does have handles on either side, so when you finally do get it out of the box, it does make it a little bit easier to move, but none of that negates the fact that this printer just weighs a lot. So that's something you're gonna to want to be prepared for. You also want to keep in mind that you, you need to have this in an area where sound may not be a big deal. This isn't the quietest printer. It's actually on right now, and the fan is a little bit loud. That idle fan is just constantly running, so it may be something you may want to turn off at a period of time. I'm not going to turn it off right now because if I do, it'll change the audio outcome that we are recording, but overall, I find that this printer works incredibly well, super fast, I think 600 millimeters per second print time is a little bit outlandish. Nobody's going to ever print to that speed. I think the most that you'll be able to push it and get good quality would be 220 to 250. But in reality, I think most people are going to get about 200. These I print at about 250 millimeters per second. Um, and like I said, I'm able to really push that speed, but also get um, some really beautiful prints. I'm very happy with the way this uh, came out and I'm very happy with the performance of this printer. You do have to change your mindset a little bit and think about how you are printing. When you are printing faster, PLA and TPU, you do have to print at much higher temperatures. I used to print TPU at about 208 to 210 degrees. I'm now printing TPU at 230 to 235. Because we are printing so fast, it needs to be able to melt that filament so much quicker. And yes, this machine definitely does do that. All right, let's talk about the long-term outlook for the QDX Max 3, because I know a lot of people are going to want to know what happens if a belt breaks, what happens if it needs maintenance. And for the most part, it's pretty easy to operate on. It's pretty easy to change a belt. It's a lot better than the previous generation, which was the Plus that had those carbon fiber rails. There are no carbon fiber rails. So theoretically, you shouldn't have to worry about anything wearing out on the X Max 3. This machine is meant to have long sustainability, with very minimal maintenance. And that's, I think, going to be one of the much more attractive things about this printer for many. Not only that, it's also the affordability of the size of the build plate. So we're talking about 1099 for this printer, which isn't the cheapest, but when you consider the build volume, I think it is pretty darn cheap. But that's the QD X Max 3. Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I'm pretty impressed with it. I was skeptical at first, but I will say it can definitely match the speeds of bamboo while also creating really great quality. And I think it fits into the lineup of my workflow a little bit better than something like my artillery machines or even my Creality machines. So it's just, you have to have the space for it. That's the biggest thing. You have to have the space for it. But if you are looking for a really big printer that puts out beautiful quality, I think the QDX Max 3 fits the bill. All right. If you're interested in more details about this printer, I'll have a full list of specifications for all that little nitty gritty stuff in the description of this video. But as always, I hope you enjoyed and stay original.
heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message on me, ain't no flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my successes only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put all their egos in check. I want the money, the power, respect, and I heard you know so and so.